In this video, I'll be making a robust, portable, switched power supply from commonly available parts. These are very handy to have around the workshop, especially when you need to control tools without an on-off switch, or the switch is in an inconvenient location. Thanks for coming along with me as I build. If you're new here, click that subscribe button to stay updated with all of my upcoming videos. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I built this specifically for my table-mounted porta bandsaw, but more on that later. Let's start by going over the material and tool list for this project. The total cost of materials is under $20 if buying everything new, and this is certainly a good candidate for recycling used parts. For the power supply, you'll need a 4 inch by 4 inch metal junction box. Ideally, you want one with a raised dimple inside for a grounding screw. Exposed work cover with slots for a switch and a duplex receptacle. A switch, a duplex receptacle or outlet, 14 gauge power supply cord, make sure it has a ground, 18 inches of green 14 gauge wire, 6 inches of colored 14 gauge wire, doesn't matter what color, just not white, a clamp connector and red plastic bushing, a grounding screw for grounding the metal junction box, and a wire nut for connecting all the ground wires. For tools, you'll only need wire strippers, a screwdriver with number 2 Phillips and flathead tips, lineman's pliers, and electrical tape. To start off, we'll need to bend off the tabs on the receptacle and the switch. These are used when wall mounting to keep the proper spacing off of the drywall, but they get in the way of the exposed work cover we'll use later. Use the pliers to bend the tabs back and forth until the metal fatigues and snaps off. Before getting into things, let's review the wiring diagram. On the left, we have power coming in from the power cord, with the black wire being hot, white being neutral, and green being ground. The hot wire is fed into the switch, and when you flip the switch, power goes to the receptacle. The circuit is completed via the neutral wire attached to the other side of the receptacle. Note that this concept can be applied to make a double switched power supply, where one switch controls only one outlet of the duplex receptacle. There are a couple more steps and additional wires needed to make this type, but it's really no more complicated than what I'm building here. Getting back to the build, take the 18 inch length of green wire and snip it into three 6 inch lengths. Strip about 3 quarters of an inch off of one end of each of the wires. Then, using the lineman's pliers, twist together two of the wires. With those twisted, add in the third wire. Then cap everything off temporarily with the wire nut. Strip another three quarters from the other ends of these wires now. Once done, use the wire strippers to bend the ends into hooks. Take the grounding screw and screw it part way into the junction box. Then take one of the hooked wire ends, wrap it around the screw, and fasten it down. Note that the wire is wrapped going clockwise around the screw. This stops the hook from opening up when tightening down. Now it's time to attach the ground wire to each of the switch and receptacle grounding screws. With that done, use the lineman's pliers to pop out one of the half inch knockouts on the junction box. The power cord will pass through here. Pull the power cord out and slip the clamp connector over the end of it. Once 
With the connector in position, also slide the red bushing between the cord and the opening in the connector, and then tighten the screws on the connector. The bushing helps keep the connector from cutting into the wires. Remove the connector's nut, pass the connector through the knockout, and thread the nut back into place. The nut can be tightened by pushing down on one of the knurlings with the tip of the screwdriver. Next, strip the ends of the wire from the power cord and twist the strands of the wire together. Remove the wire nut from the bundle of ground wires and wrap the power cord's ground around them. Twist the wire nut back down on the ground wires. Now to start wiring the switch and receptacle. Start by forming a hook in the white neutral wire from the power cord and wrap this around one of the bright metal screw terminals of the receptacle. Use a screwdriver to tighten the wire down and also screw in the other neutral terminal to help keep it from shorting out on anything. Next, take the black hot wire from the power cord and wrap it around one of the terminals on the switch. It doesn't matter which one. Tighten it down with your screwdriver. Take out the 6 inch length of colored wire and strip 3 quarters of an inch off both ends. Using the wire strippers, bend hooks in both ends. Wrap one of the ends around the other terminal end of the switch and fasten it down. Then, take the other end of this wire and attach it to the brass colored terminal on the receptacle and also fasten it down. With the switch and receptacle all wired up, wrap both in electrical tape. This helps protect against anything shorting out on the metal junction box or against one another. Now to start buttoning things up. Remove the exposed work cover from its packaging. The switch is attached to the cover with the two included screws. For the receptacle, there's a single screw in the center that fastens it down. Also included are two screws with nuts that can go on the top and bottom of the receptacle but I don't find these necessary. Take off the screws from the corners of the junction box. These same screws are reused to attach the cover. Neatly fold the wires into the junction box and fasten the cover down with the two screws in the corners. The switch power source is now complete. Back to the port of band saw. I attach my power source to the frame of the saw's table with a couple of machine screws, since this is meant to be dedicated to the machine. All that's left to do is plug the power source into the wall, plug the machine into the power source, flip the switch, and get to work. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe for more.